This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Muhammad had an adopted son named Zaid bin Muhammad. He would like to marry off Zaid. Zaid, I would like to marry you with Zainab. I think she would be a great wife for you. Yes, Rasulullah. Let's go to her place. Zainab, I want you to marry Zaid. What? He? He used to be your slave. I thought you want to propose me. No, no way. I don't want to marry him. He was a slave and I have a higher social status than him. You have to marry Zaid. Oh, Razalella, do you really want to tell me what to do? <gasps> if I already decide something for you, then you need to obey. Quran, Surah Al-Azab, verse 36 says, it is not for a believing man or a believing woman, when Allah and His Messenger have decided a matter, that they should have any choice about their affair. And whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger has certainly strayed into clear error. Okay, I will marry Zaid. Muhammad then held a wedding ceremony for Zaid and Zainab. One day, Muhammad tried to find Zaid in his house. Zaid, are you there? But Zaid was not at home. As the wind blew the curtain aside, Prophet Muhammad saw Zainab naked in her chamber. <gasps> Masyallah. Zainab quickly put on her clothes, then she went out to meet Prophet Muhammad. Come in, O Prophet of God, for you are as my father and my mother to me. Bless him who changed one's heart. History of Tabari, Volume 8, Page 4, explains that Muhammad saw his daughter-in-law naked, Zainab was in her chamber, undressed, and admiration for her entered the heart of the Prophet. After seeing his daughter-in-law naked, the Prophet fell in love with her. This is according to Tafsir al-Jalalain, Quran, Surah al azam verse 36. Then on one occasion, the Prophet caught sight of her and felt love for her. When Zaid came home, Zainab told him about Prophet Muhammad's visit. Your dad came here when you were out. He met me instead. Oh, and then, what happened? Nothing happened. After finding out you were not here, he left. Is that it? Oh, before he left, he said, bless him who changed one's heart. What does it mean? I don't know. Having lived with the Prophet Muhammad since childhood, Zaid certainly knew very well his father's character and personality. It was difficult for Muhammad to hide his feelings toward his daughter-in-law. When Zaid found out about what was going on, he disliked how his adopted father felt about his wife. Look at them. I can tell there's something going on between them. It's obvious, isn't it? How outrageous. Things got worse for Zaid when Allah punished him whenever he wanted to approach his wife.
Ugh. Ouch, it hurts. My private part is swollen so bad, it hurts. Whenever I tried to approach my wife, my private part was swollen. I couldn't function as a husband and I was in pain. Bro, I think maybe Allah did that to you. He tried to preserve Zainab for your father. Tafsir Al-Kurtubi, Al-Jamili Akam, Volume 7, Page 139 Quran, Surah Al-Azab, Verse 37 Allah did the following to my husband, Zaid bin Muhammad. Zaid's penis started to swell so he can't make love with me. Zaid decided to meet his adopted father, Muhammad. Rasulullah, perhaps Zainab has excited your admiration, so I will leave her. What is wrong? Has anything on her part disquieted you? No, by God, nothing she has done has disquieted me. Keep your wife to yourself. Don't separate from her. And fear Allah. But actually, Muhammad hid his desire toward Zainab. Oh, I can't forget how she looked in her room that day. I'm afraid people will start to notice this. Oh, wait, wait, Allah sent a message to me. Quran, Surah Al-Azab, verse 37. And, remember, O Muhammad, when you said to the one on whom Allah bestowed favor and you bestowed favor, keep your wife and fear Allah, while you concealed within yourself that which Allah is to disclose. No need for me to conceal my feeling since Allah will disclose it anyway. Since then, Muhammad did not stop Zayd anymore. I will divorce Zainab so you can marry her. As you wish. A decent man would certainly feel very humiliated by such an inappropriate offer. But it seems that the Prophet had his own moral standards. People start talking about Muhammad's plan to marry Zainab. How come he could marry his daughter-in-law? In the Quran, Surah Al-Azab, verse 36, Allah forced Zainab to marry Zaid. But just one verse later, Allah married Muhammad to Zainab? Why is Allah more concerned with fulfilling the Prophet's sexual desires than anything else? Allah allows me to marry Zainab, since Zayd wasn't my real son. So when Zayd had no longer any need for her, we married her to you in order that there not be upon the believers any discomfort concerning the wives of their adopted sons when they no longer have need of them. And ever as the command of Allah accomplished. With Quran, Surah Al-Azab, verse 37, Muhammad banned adoption in Islam. We cannot adopt orphans anymore. How on earth God would abolish the noble practice of adoption? To show that Zayd is not his real son and it is legal for Muhammad to marry his daughter-in-law. Wow, the excuse is worse than the offense. Who would like to follow the Prophet's moral example? Develop wrong desires for your son's wife? Aren't we all want to our sons to have Sakina, Mawada, and Rama marriages? This is one of Rasulullah's many privileges. Not for you, but for the Prophet only. Tafsir al-Kurtubi, Quran, Surah al-Azab, verse 50. If Prophet Muhammad looks at a woman and desires her, then it is necessary for her husband to divorce her so that he can marry her. That is his right from God. <laughs> <laughs> A marriage celebration was held for Muhammad and Zainab. Everybody was happy except Zaid. I lost my beloved wife. What's more, I'm not the Prophet's adopted son anymore. In the past, people called me Zaid bin Muhammad, but now they call me Zaid bin Haritha. How can I be happy in a situation like this?
Up to late at night, guests still did not want to leave Prophet Muhammad's house. The Prophet left the room to give a hint that it was time for the guests to leave. After a while, most people left Muhammad's house. But three people still remain. These people are still here. Why didn't they leave? Don't they know that we want to be alone? <laughs> the Prophet showed displeasure with them. Look. He tried to show us that we should leave. Why not telling us directly? Maybe he needs Allah's help to get rid of his guests. <laughs> <laughs> At last, what am I supposed to do? Ask them to leave? People just have no manner. Here is the verse to get rid of guests who stay for too long in your house. Quran, Surah Al-Azab, verse 53. O oh, you who believe, do not enter the homes of the Prophet, unless you are given permission to come for a meal and do not wait for its preparation. And when you are invited, go in. And when you have eaten, disperse, without lingering for conversation. This irritates the Prophet, and he shies away from you, but God does not shy away from the truth. Even after the wedding, people continued to talk negatively about Muhammad's marriage to Zainab. How could he have the heart to cancel Zaid's adoption? That's right. Doesn't he remember in the past when he swore in front of the Kaaba to take Zaid as his own son? In our culture, once we adopt someone as a child, then that person becomes a member of our family for life. For life. Muhammad felt the need to stop people talking about the disgrace he had done to Zaid. I have to do something. Zaid led the Muslim army to attack Basra. Take over Byzantine power there. Be the flag bearer. Yes, Rasulullah. Zaid led 3,000 Muslim soldiers to Basra. The other two commanders of the Muslim army were Jafar bin Abi Talib and Abdullah bin Rawaha. Is your private part still swollen? Just shut up. <laughs> Zaid led his army from Medina to Basra, which was located in the Shem or Syria region. The Byzantine force intercepted them at a village called Muda. Oh, they're already waiting for us. Retreat! Retreat! The two Muslim commanders, Jafar bin Abu Talib and Abdullah bin Rawaha, died in the battle. In the past, by Muhammad's order, Zaid used to attack and rob Quraysh merchants who were easy targets. This time, he dealt with a real powerful army. Ugh. Zaid finally died. Let's compare the love story of the Prophet Muhammad and Zainab with the incident that happened to King David, which is written in the Bible, 2 Samuel, chapters 11 and 12. Just as the Prophet Muhammad lusted for Zainab, King David also had a passion for Bathsheba, the wife of an Israeli soldier named Uriah. King David then removed Uriah so that he could marry Bathsheba, the true God of the Bible, Yahweh, does not compromise his holiness with David's or anybody's sins, even when David was his chosen king. He severely chastised and punished King David. 2 Samuel, chapter 12, verse 10. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house. Consequently, David repented in tears in Psalms, chapter 51, verse 1 to 3 and 10. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your unfailing love. Yahweh condemned covetous sexual desires for another man's wife. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 27 and 28. Exodus, chapter 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. 
On the other hand, the God of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, never punished Prophet Muhammad, no matter how sinful he was. Allah cooperated with the Prophet to realize his evil desires, through various verses of the Quran which justify the destruction of the household of his own son and daughter-in-law. Quran, Surah Al-Azab, verse 37 and 38. Al-Sirah Al-Halabia, volume 3, page 377. If Muhammad lusted after a married woman, it became a must for her husband to divorce her for him. Tabari, volume 9, page 134. Muhammad took Zainab but Allah did not find any fault in the relationship and ordered the marriage. Allah even claims to manifest the lust of adultery in the hearts of men in Sahih Muslim, book number 33, hadith number 6422. Allah fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in. There would be no escape from it. Shortly after the marriage between Muhammad and Zainab, Allah went on to totally abolish the practice of adoption with Quran, Surah Al-Azab, verse 4 and 5. It is clear that the reason to abolish the noble moral act of adoption is to protect Muhammad from the accusation of his contemporaries. Some Muslims argue that adopted children are not biological children so that the Prophet Muhammad may marry his adopted son's wife. This is a weak excuse because legally and ethically, he was still considered a son in a civilized world.